the message here is that mercury is a neurotoxin and mixed dental amalgam is a neurotoxin without qualification. I had this procedure done through that amalgam filling. Within days of that, I lost my ability, I'm a trial lawyer, I lost my ability to even put together a simple to-do list. My daughter was graduating from kindergarten. I couldn't put like four tasks in a row. Why is this poisonous element being drilled into the mouths of pregnant women and children? Scientific data from all over the world relates the presence of amalgam fillings to cardiovascular problems, hearing loss, kidney ailments, dysfunction of the immune system, Lou Gehrig's disease, multiple sclerosis, autism, and a myriad of other health problems. A lot of the data that you see that says this is safe and they've used urinary mercury to make that estimation, they are totally out of base. It's just not good science. Urinary mercury does not do this. Is mercury retained by certain susceptible individuals? <clears throat> what we know, and you can go to Google, pick up your favorite neurological disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism, any of these, and Google oxidative stress, and you will see that oxidative stress is correlated to all the neurological illnesses that we know about, as well as things like arthritis, etc. Oxidative stress says that your levels of glutathione are below normal. Glutathione is the molecule that is bound to mercury to allow it to be excreted fecally. If you don't have glutathione, you can't get rid of mercury. And if you do have a lot of mercury in your feces, you are depleting your body of glutathione. It's a two-way street. I've been suffering from numerous autoimmune and mystery illnesses for many years. Most recently, I've been managing symptoms of fibromyalgia, ADHD, peripheral neuropathy, chronic fatigue, celiac disease, in addition to 81 other food allergies. I was vomiting every day for months. MS, ALS, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's continue to plague me. Learning that dentists who continue to place this cumulative neurotoxin are affecting the health of the entire body as mercury leaches out of the fillings and is absorbed throughout from head to toe is most sobering. And the harsh reality that mercury lodges in the brain where it stays year after year. Excuse me, we need to ask you to sum up. Suppressing the immune system and killing neurons but destroying their myelin sheath. I am living proof of that. A couple of people from the Pennsylvania Dental Association, I want to tell you a little about what they did this year. Uh, it, before the Philadelphia Board of Health, the PDA testified in favor of a dentist who, and in favor of a system saying that the inner city children, the children with disabilities in North Philadelphia, that's the African American area of Philadelphia, that the black children should not get dental care, should not get dental care unless their parents sign a statement agreeing to get mercury fillings. I want to show you the horrible amount of mercury that comes out of these amalgams when you first just triturate it. It's not a little bitty top part that y'all are talking about. I don't know where in the world this is coming from, but you ought to just see. So I have passed it around to you. I have put it in photographic form. I don't understand why uh, teeth that are uh, extracted uh, with mercury fillings are, must be considered as hazardous waste. And he gave me a few teeth that uh, he had extracted uh, that do contain mercury fillings. And it, it, he said that according to the government, these fillings are, these teeth were perfectly safe uh, when they were in the person's head. You take them out and they're hazardous waste. That just isn't logical and doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. We had a Lancaster County dairy farmer who suffered 15 years from small, small um, heart attacks. He was sent home to die. As soon as we take, took the failed amalgam fillings out, his heart attack stopped and he went back to work. We had an MS patient gets out of her wheelchair and walks as soon as she became mercury free. We had a fibromyalgia patient for, who was for 46 years dealing with terrible pain and drugs. The pain disappeared as soon as she had her mercury fillings taken out. Remember, it's not about us, it's about them. I am here today to show you that mercury also escapes through the teeth, bones, and gums, causing health problems for patients. My time is limited, so I cannot tell you about all the hundreds of patients I have treated who have been damaged by the mercury put in their mouths. 
However, I am here to show you three patients who are representative of the patients who have had mercury leaching into their bones, gums, and teeth, and the health problems they have had because of it. Susie had an amalgam filling that leaked into the bone and gum above her upper right first molar. You can see the mercury coming through her gums, resulting in what we called a mercury tattoo. I was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis an autoimmune disease causing a breakdown of the communication between the nerves and the muscles. <clears throat> when, questioned, when questioning five neuro-ophthalmologists at teaching hospitals in Philadelphia what the causes of these diseases might be, I was emphatically told that there was no known cause, no known cure, and was literally told that I would be sick for the rest of my life, offering only steroids to fix my eyes and mestinon to suppress the symptoms. Rejecting what seemed to be a deadly prognosis, I initiated my own research and within five days discovered that the symptoms were the result of having been acutely poisoned by mercury during the drilling out and removal of an old amalgam filling only seven days before I was afflicted with the neurological symptoms. Little did I know at the time that so-called silver fillings were actually 50% mercury, a known neurotoxin. I have spoken with a mother from North Carolina who has three children on the autistic spectrum. She was turned away by the only dentist in her area simply because she did not want to subject her neurologically impaired children to this neurotoxin. I'm an RN. We'd been to every doctor under the sun. I'd studied, studied, couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. Everything was normal. They don't know why he kept having all these symptoms. Mayo Clinic, two weeks, $80,000, still no answers. All the tests come back normal. We don't know what's wrong with him. Um, we come home, we have six children, and we come home to die. That's what it was. My husband could not get up and take my kids places. He had vision loss. He couldn't hardly drive. Um, it, it was horrible. It was horrible. Um, May 2010, I had had somebody say something to me about dental fillings. I thought, well, that can't make you sick. I'd never heard of such a thing. I'm a nurse, public health nurse. Never heard of amalgam fillings making people sick. Looked it up and all the symptoms were there. I was dumbfounded. Mercury doesn't bother Kennedys, and that doesn't make it right to put it in people that you saw here talk today. It also doesn't make it right for the dental students who are taught that mercury is safe to argue their patients into having mercury. That's what we were taught in <coughs> dental school. We got a perfect discussion yesterday about how we don't use the mercury word. Oh, we call it amalgam. That's part of the deception. So that people don't understand you're implanting them with a time-release implant that will accumulate in various organs. Lee Cashman, our executive director, hears these stories all day long. He's on the phone 10 hours a day, seven days a week, talking to people that are poisoned. He spoke to a, a instructor from a community college in Virginia whose dentist placed gold crowns over top of mercury fillings. This combination of mixed metals, gold, silver, zinc, tin, and mercury acted like a battery in his mouth, causing more mercury to come out of the fillings. Though Rob initially improved after having his fillings removed, the damage was so severe he had to retire prematurely from teaching because he developed Parkinson's disease. Welders know you don't mix certain materials together. Bridge builders know that, but dentists don't know that. Why aren't you professors in these dental schools teaching these people something so they don't come out and poison people? Why aren't you teaching them not to mix metals in the mouth, causing the galvanic currents? One minute, please. But yet you get on the ADE website, and all they say is, it's another allergy. My dentist mixed metals in my mouth. He also exposed me to mercury vapor. I was shocked at the ignorance of the dental profession. During the season of hope and light, let us align that the reality that mercury is a poison and does not belong in teeth, and surely not in a fetus. And I have a question. With Ten regard, seconds. Okay. Please. Why is a voting panel of dentists making a medical determination on the well-being of a fetus and child? It testified in 2006. So I have the same thing that everybody else back there has. I was a dental assistant for 24 years until I couldn't work anymore. I lost my job. I can't work anymore. I get $700 a month in disability, and I have to pay my own way to come here to remind all of you that you're here for the public. You're here for the workers. I shouldn't have to do this. I appreciate you people all here for coming and making an attempt 
because, you know, if you listen to the news, you realize the FDA has been having trouble, you know, between Vioxx, Avendia, that really shocked me because that, that was bad four years ago, five years ago. It's time to do your job and protect the public, protect the workers, protect the pregnant women, the children under six years old that it says right on the amalgam bottle that you cannot give a child under six years old an amalgam filling. It's time. We can't do this anymore.